This is a great day for science um, and a great day uh, for hope to, uh, that we will see the end of the COVID pandemic. Uh, Emory has uh, made great contributions to the Moderna vaccine trial. We had three sites um, that were enrolling. Uh, we enrolled um, over uh, 700 participants uh, into the study. Uh, and so we're very proud. Our teams have been working very hard and uh, are very proud of the uh, momentous work that we have done. 30,000 people uh, were enrolled across the US, it was approximately 100 sites. Um, and as I said, uh, uh, approximately 700 were enrolled here at Emory at our three sites uh, at Grady at the Hope Clinic and the Emory Children's Center uh, with uh, under the leadership of Evan Anderson at the Children's Center. We contributed um, greatly to the diversity of the trial. As you all uh, may have seen, a lot of focus was placed on ensuring that the trial uh, participants were representative of those uh, in the US and those that are most likely to benefit, including uh, Black and Latinx populations. And here at Emory, we contributed greatly to succeeding and reaching those diversity goals. Really, just our teams have been working incredibly hard uh, to make this happen uh, in the setting of a global pandemic. Uh, and so this is really, really sweet. Uh, and it's sweet for science uh, overall, as there's been so much uncertainty in the last year. And so this was just a, a fantastic day for all of us. So the primary outcome, which is what the DSMB evaluated in their interim analysis, was for symptomatic confirmed COVID disease. Uh, and so uh, we will find out uh, more in the coming days and actually uh, in the press release, uh, it does um, tell you how many people had mild versus severe disease. I believe it was 11 people ended up with severe COVID disease. All of those were in the placebo arm of the trial, uh, but we will see more breakdown of that as the data becomes um, available. But yes, the primary outcome was symptomatic. So COVID confirmed COVID disease uh, uh, is that 94.5% efficacy uh, estimate. Um, in contrast to the Pfizer vaccine, um, this vaccine uh, is stable at two to eight degrees Celsius. So uh, refrigerator uh, for up to 30 days um, is what the manufacturer has stated. So some of those cold chain storage issues uh, that people have brought up with the Pfizer vaccine that requires minus 70 storage, which is ultra cold storage, um, could be alleviated uh, by this vaccine, but still does re you know, require um, some period of time um, in cold storage, but uh, this is good news uh, for places that may not have access to that ultra cold storage. The um, rapidity in the clinical trials for these COVID vaccines is nothing we've ever seen before, but that is because the amount of effort um, and resources that has been poured into this effort uh, is really unfathomable. No steps in the regular sequence of um, vaccine development or product development have been skipped. Uh, they in Instead, the steps of product development, in this case, vaccine development, were performed in series as opposed to, or were performed in parallel as opposed to typically they're performed in series. And that is how we so quickly came to these results. Uh, we will know the full side effect profile for the 30,000 people that participated in the trial. Uh, that will be coming forth, I'm sure, and with that peer review data that we're waiting on. Um, and uh, you know, that will help us to communicate to, to communities and to people uh, the safety of the vaccine uh, in addition to the efficacy results that we've just seen. But yes, I think now we have a lot of work to do. Now we have a lot of work to do to convince people uh, that the vaccine is uh, safe, uh, assuming that it's efficacious uh, and that they should get it uh, and they should encourage their family members and their friends to get it as well. And so that's the next frontier, I think. Uh, and that's uh, rightly highlighted at this point in time. Now uh, the trial will continue uh, to collect safety and efficacy data. The company has stated that they anticipate uh, submitting for an EUA to the FDA in the next few weeks and hopefully to have vaccine available uh, by the end of the year. Uh, I can't uh, speculate any uh, specific time, but uh, HHS, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, has been collaborating with the states and the state health departments to create a deployment plan uh, for the vaccine. Um, all we know at this point in time is that both Pfizer and Moderna are anticipating submitting uh, emergency use authorizations to FDA. There is tremendous value in non-pharmaceutical uh, interventions, and I think you mean uh, things like masking and physical distancing and avoiding crowds 
crowds, uh, staying away from people, quarantining and isolating if you're sick or if you're in contact with someone who's had COVID disease. Yes, those are still the most important things that we can do on a daily basis. Uh, however, we will not see the other side of this pandemic without an effective vaccine and without effective vaccines, most likely multiple vaccines. Uh, and so while masking, physical distancing, um, staying in when you're ill, um, staying away from others, if you've had contact uh, with someone who's had COVID are the only thing that we can do today and next week and the week after that um, to reduce COVID rates and reduce our own risk of infection. A vaccine was what will see the other side of this pandemic um, globally. And so both are very important um, to pursue.